Hello, everyone. First of all, thank you for being here. I know it's a tough competition of talks at the same time. It's the second day, almost three more talks to go, so you almost did it. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And first of all, I will try to explain why we are here and why we are going to be speaking about this. Uh, Carlos and myself, we, we work at Microsoft. And Microsoft is a big company. We work especially in the part that we do the projects to adopt technology, uh, Microsoft technology mainly, of almost all the time, and how to, to get this technology to the final clients. Okay, so we are going to be speaking about our experiences and what we have learned that the scale means to all these clients that we have met. Okay? And the idea is you got a lot of information during these three days, two days. Uh, ML flows, machine learning, AI. We are not trying to throw much more information to you, but for you to start asking some questions. So ideally, the target of this uh, short presentation is for you to end with the right questions to ask. When this is finished, you go back home and you say, how am I going to apply all these things that I've learned during the, those two days? Okay? So with that goal in mind, the first question, and it's a really tricky question, is what is a scale? Why are you here? Because this EI at, at the scale, what are you expecting here? Are you expecting a talk about compute power? Are you expecting a talk about how to put more models into production? Because th this is a, there is a different answer every time you ask this question. For some companies, a scale is having machine learning models in production every two weeks. Really ambitious, no? something like that. For other companies, scale is compute power. For other companies, maybe a scale is that the company, the whole company, start understanding what is uh, AI. So having some awareness, adoption of AI. It could be also because someone said today, in a, I think it was Peck, Paco Nathan, they like said, you cannot compete having more data scientists than Microsoft, Google, but you have more business analysts than any of us. So how can you transform all these people that you have in your company to citizen data scientists, people that can use this tool to create some AI. Or maybe for you, scale is, as I said, that people in your company believing that AI is something possible. Okay? So in this talk, we are going to, first, Carlos is going to explain, trying to explain what is a scale for Microsoft, which is one of the things. And then, in the last part, I will try to give you a framework, a model of how to think about the scale for go back to your company or to your startup or to your daily job and think how I'm going to adapt these technologies to my company to really, really scale. So that's the goal for these 30 minutes left. Okay? Yeah. Great, Pablo. Well, indeed, I wanted just to start. This is the, a brief summary of the Ignite announcement uh, from Orlando last week. It's about services that we have de de uh, delivered to our customers and partners. And as Pablo was uh, mentioning, I wanted to share with you that, that notion of scale at Microsoft at, of course, 10,000 uh, foot feet. So uh, with our customers and at Microsoft, we talk about a tech intensity. That's uh, the notion that as an engineer and I like, I love, and you will see in a second why. When we talk about tech, tech intensity, this is a, a straightforward formula where we mean with the first part, First thing that you are seeing there is how quickly can you adopt new technology in your company and your organization. That means, of course, every, uh, every new time you start uh, adopting new technology, you don't build and re recreate the wheel. And indeed, it's part uh, of the work that the product groups at Microsoft work. They build their own uh, product based on uh, our ser services and as well on open source uh, solutions. And the second part, it's uh, critical and, and very interesting for this conversation is about the tech capability. How are you able to build your own uh, uh, solutions internally? How you are able to use that technology and deliver what really matters to your organization? So for example, which are your, the best thing you do, which is the most mm, proud of solution you are of, which is the best thing that you do that really differentiates you from, from your competitors, that's your tech capability. And 
the trust part is all uh, really a foundation for us, and it's uh, the parallel law all about trust. When we call trust, we are talking about security, we are talking about uh, privacy, we are talking about compliance. And every service that we build and we deliver is based on that trust. And this is not just for us, but uh, as well for you. You as creators of technology, at the end, uh, needs to see that as a key foundation of uh, your solution and your tech capabilities. But thinking about how tech intensity helps, and as you may see, this is really extended, no matter if AI, uh, uh, AI solutions, this is uh, for any type of solution, but here specifically for data and AI solutions. Uh, having a low tech intensity means that there is a gap. There is a gap between the information that you have, the information about your uh, systems, the data coming from your customer, your systems, and how you are able to use some of your technology. So if you have low tech intensity, you don't have maybe the best technology to, uh, uh, to run for that use case. And that resonates with the gap that I was mentioning, so that you will have a gap between the time that data arrives and the insights that you get after uh, working on that data. So here, the idea is if I am a high tech intensity, I will reduce the time to be able to gather insights and as well be able to reduce the gap about being able to get insights before we have that data. And that gap is what we call when we mean tech intensity, to pull up that red line to the green line so you are able to adapt quickly and faster to your uh, solutions or your use case. So at the end, when we are targeting that text intensity, of course, it needs to be linked to our mission, in this case of your mission or your, your organization. In this case, our mission is simply put to enable you to create with our technology. At the end, is to be able to empower every organization and, and, and people on the planet to achieve more. And that means that to be able to use that technology to become a digital company and use that technology to change and turn the organization into a digital company. Because at the end, what we envision is everyone to be really a software company. And from those things, the challenge here, the challenge about the scale and the opportunity that we have is how to be able to uh, engage and work with 100,000 plus employees with 75 million organizations and partners in the world to impact and empower the 7 billion people on the planet. That's uh, our key mantra. So uh, when we are able to empower all the organizations to change and address, uh, to change their lives and address their dreams. And this needs to be rooted, of course, uh, in your values. This is an example in the AI space, but it really matters for any, anything that you may do. We uh, started uh, three, four years ago to set up, to build up those six principles in order to uh, think about everything that you do under a trust mindset. We talk about fairness, privacy, transparency, so that everyone in the organization think uh, and work in, with the same principles, guiding the, and building the AI solutions through that vision and principles. And then we move into practice, because you may know that three, four years ago, we, we delivered a Thai bot that was a, a chatbot delivered that we uh, learned a lot from that. Going from, from principle to practice begins to be able to address those principles in a practical way inside the organization. The first 
was internally, and it, there is an AI and ethics committee for engineering and research, so that they work for sales and services to be able to understand and, and, and design solutions that address and follows those principles. And outside, we started, and uh, uh, there was a, a lot of traction with the partnership on AI.org that you can visit. There are there many companies in the tech space, but profit or not profit, like Apple, Google, Facebook, many, many others, to be able to work in the ecosystem through looking through those principles. And of course, thinking, we're mentioning the empower every people and every organization, thinking about how the human AI design should be built. And then moving into tools so that you are able to implement and we are working and delivering, uh, sharing with ecosystem tools, for example, to detect bias or uh, to be able more to be more transparent in the models or the information that we deliver or we manage through, uh, through the services. So here, start what I was, well, uh, was talking Pablo about. This is about you. So think about questions and what do you think after all the, those two days. And yes, scale that. What are you, your trade-offs? There are many specific attributes based on your mission, on your principles, on your values that needs to be addressed and balanced to understand maybe I shouldn't do that project because it does not fit in, 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 in my, my, into my trade-offs. And of course, being able to understand how should I build that solutions. So I'll hand over to Pablo and see and what I've been working with the customers. So what happens here is that once you are fully energized and say, I'm going to do all these projects, I'm going to apply all these things that I learned, what comes next? Welcome to the Disappointment Valley, no? where you are doing a lot of proof of concept, where you are, are doing a lot of things, but you don't get real, real result, real business value. And be honest, we are much more better than we were a few years ago. But if you speak to the companies out there, and it's not everything as pretty as it looks sometimes. I mean, this is the valley that we were speaking about. You have a proof of concept, you have everyone aligned in the business, we are going to invest on this. After some time, where is the value? How, how are we going into production with this? How, how, how are, I'm, are we measuring that this is really working? This is a really good uh, report uh, from last year, and one of the sentences that is saying there is that only 4% of the companies are saying that they feel that they are getting some value out of AI. But 71% of the companies, they say, yeah, yes, we want to do it, okay? So that's, that's, that's the mismatch in between. I want to do it, and I'm really getting that value. And this is something also um, well, you can see in, in many of the companies in the world. But it's not only in Europe, because you might think this is because we are Europe, we are different. This is, again, another report, and I know you're tired of seeing reports, but this is also a, a good gist of what is happening around the world. Is For example, in the States, one of the things they say, there are many pains, but one of the main pains is I'm struggling to move AI initiatives into production. Okay? And again, just the last one. This is Paco Nathan. I was speaking about this as well. The challenges in AI adoption in the companies. Three main things, culture, data, skilled people. Okay, we are struggling to go into production. That's the reality. There are really good results. There are really good proof of concept. There are really good things happening, but the challenge is trying to get it as at scale. And as I said, scale can mean different things from different companies. You need to think what is the scale for you. But the goal is, or the challenge is, to go to scale. And what is this happening? Why are we crossing this valley of disappointment? And because basically we are looking at this problem from four different lenses. The, the business that is probably the most important one is the one that is telling us, you need to do this. This is where the value is. We need to bet on this uh, strat initiative. Okay. But then we have the IT or the data scientists, the second column. It happens that sometimes I'm just fighting to get the best model. And I'm speaking about this a lot of time, and even with the, with the team. The other day, in a machine learning project, we were, well, we were working for a few weeks, 
and the results were we were, uh, we were able to recognize some entities in some documents that were all PDFs, and suddenly we were able to recognize who was a notary, who was a liar, and we spent two weeks doing that. When we went to the client, they said, yeah, for me, a search was enough. <laughs> we didn't need all the things that you created. And for me, it was like, yes, yeah, sometimes we are just trying to get the best model, the best technology doing this, and we don't think about what the business really requested. I know that seems simple, but stop and think about it. We don't want to end up being doing waterfall projects again in data science. We want to be agile, no? That's, that's the thing. And so, and, and the third, the risk people, they say, you know, this is dangerous. This, I don't know, this, I don't want to move the data to the cloud. This is dangerous. Most of the times they think that this is dangerous because they don't know what is this about. And of course, the architects. Everyone has an architect inside of his heart. Let's try to create the best platform possible. Let's try to create something that is going to work for all the projects that we have now and in the future. The, so you need to give all these people what they want. So you need to create a team where all these people are involved from the beginning. And that's, that's the key. That's the key to go to scale. And from our point of view, this translates into three Xs. You need to think about the people part, you need to think about the technology part, and you need to think about the process part. What does it mean to think about the people? But you need to think about how to uh, create, how to uh, uh, get the people involved into creating new AI initiatives. So they need to believe that this is possible. You need also to have the technology, but you know that the technology is there. You know that DevOps is really important, that MLOps is, is the key. You, you know those things already, but you need to be able to scatter that, that knowledge in all, in, all around the company. And of course, the process, the part of saying, I want to do this with less effort every time. I want to do this in an automatic way. Someone told me once that a data science project is like put, putting a rocket in the moon. I said, well, not always, but the goal is putting a rocket in the moon every two weeks, in one after another, one after another. That's what we want to get. That's the scale. Being able to do that in a way that is automated and is working fine, properly, or almost perfect. And it's not important how you call this. You can call it center of excellence, you can call it AI factory, you can call it control tower of AI. Well, it's not important the name, but you need to have something that put all these people together, okay? And this is just a, an example. This is a framework for you. I mean, this is something for you to think about. This, I'm not saying that this is the solution, but you need to check if you are checking all these boxes. Imagine in the people part, and can you see that? Well, yes. You have continuous innovation, you have AI innovation. You have to be able to, in your company, everyone has to be able to create and come up with ideas of what they want to implement. Of course, you have the DevOps for AI and data governance. There's, there's been tons of top, uh, talks during these two days about these two things. These are important. I'm really glad because actually, three years ago, we were not speaking about DevOps for, for AI. Three years ago, Asking one data scientist, are you able to tell me which data have you used for this experiment and exactly reproduce that and all those things and retrain was like, a, I'm still not there. Now we know that that is possible, but that's not the only thing what I'm, we, we are saying is you need to put all these things together. And of course, the last part, you need to build, as Carlos said, a platform that everyone trusts. Uh, you need to create a community of people that believe that this is possible, okay? And all these parts are important. And in the beginning, of course, you are going to need some help. This is not possible to do it from yourself from scratch. But at the end, you will get the velocity. At the end, if you check all these boxes, you are going to be able to put a rocket in the moon every two weeks, straight. What happens if you don't do it? What happens? That's a question. This is like testing for wrong. What happens if you remove the continuous innovation part of this equation? As again, think of this about like a framework for you to check, to think about if I have all these boxes. If you remove the continuous innovation, there is no alignment. You will end up doing projects that are not relevant for the business. You will end up doing maybe a natural language processing algorithm that, for what, okay? What happens if you remove the AI-driven culture? Maybe there is no adoption. No one believes that, that you are building, or no one uses, that is even worse, what you are building. What happens if you remove the bobs? Of course, that's a disaster. No? You are not able to retrain. Okay, you know you are not in a good position and you remove the bobs from the equation. What happens if you remove data governance? No one trusts the data. There is no quality. The whole thing doesn't, doesn't hold. What happens if you remove the center of excellence? You can do that. 
but you are going to reinvent the wheel time after time. You are going to build the same project n times, and you are not going to reduce the knowledge. And what happens if you don't have a strong AI community? What happens is that you don't scale. And again, you need to think here what is the scale for you. And I'm not saying that these are the boxes. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you need to think where you are and in, which, in this axis where you want to be. Okay? And to move to yet another example, let's imagine that you have initiated, stabilized, optimized, and scaled maturity levels. Okay? And if for each of these streams, you need to take some uh, little steps to move to the next level. Okay? For example, in the first level, continuous innovation. One thing is doing right, right, doing right things. That's correct. But doing things right is the next level. Okay? And for you, my, my question will be, try to identify yourself where you are in there. Try to identify if you are doing things in all these streams. And then think, what is the next thing that you need to do to move forward to the next level? Ideally, we will want to be in the scale phase. But again, then is the question, what is the scale for you? A scale for you is having all the business analysts in your company working as data scientists. So maybe for you, the most important part is the community. What is a scale for you? A scale for you is being able to retrain models automatically. Then maybe DevOps is the most important part for you. The Maybe the company doesn't believe that AI is the, or machine learning is the important thing for the future of the company. Maybe you need to work on the innovation part. So the thing here is try to create your own roadmap, try to find the boxes, and create something similar to this. And the first part that you need to do is identify where you are. Okay. <clears throat> and at this stage, you have seen too many maturity levels. I mean, this thing of where are you in the first stage, foundational, approaching, aspirational, I'm sure you are tired of seeing all these kind of graphics. But for me, there is one important thing here. How do you know that you are in the, in the highest maturity level possible? For us, this is visible AI. This is where AI is not in the laboratory. AI is not something that you are doing in IT. AI is everywhere. It's visible. It's tangible. It's in your application. It's in your reports. It's everywhere. So you can use these triggers. You can, know, you can use these pains to identify where you are. But at the end, this is just yet another maturity level that probably you have seen many, many of these. Let me drink some water. And because I knew that you are not going to remember this, <laughs> Let me, I, I, we, I borrow a metaphor from one of our colleagues. Okay? And probably this you will remember. Let's think about the age of AI. What is this? It's the same, but with some cartoons. Imagine that you are in the Stone Age. People haven't, still, haven't discovered the fire. They don't know what AI can, 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 can do, can, what is possible with AI. What is the Bronze Age? This is where you, you are creating tools. No? You are starting to use DevOps. You are starting to use something. You are using tools to create things. What is Iron Age? Maybe you have a battle of houses, data against IT. <laughs> you have some other things that are coming into, into, the, into the equation. Then, but you are still not using the full power. What is the Renaissance? The Renaissance is where finally you manage to merge all these things. You have IT people working with UX people, working with business people, or all of them are in enriching the others. And the final, final stage, what is the final stage? When you are industrialized, when you have a factory of AI. You have a process when idea to production, not idea to MVP, hmm? idea to proof of concept. To idea to production, you have a streamline. Okay? I think this is much more easier to remember no? than the maturity levels that we are used to see. But for me, again, this is the same question. Try to think where you are and what you need to move to the next level. Have you discovered the fire? I don't know. Maybe there are some companies that said, and we are going to put as an example, imagine that your company is a 20,000 people company, and they don't believe that AI is something that is for them, that is too complicated, is, is too far. Okay? How do you, do you help them to discover the fire? And here is an example, but just an example. There, imagine that you have an application like this, and this is called Power Apps, and it has something that is called AI Builder, that this helps anyone to create an application where they can recognize 
objects. Okay? I'm showing this just an example, but you need to think about your own example. If you want to convince your people that AI is something real, that that's a scale for you, imagine that you say, a scale for me is convincing 100,000 employees that AI is possible. Think about something that you need to do in, in the area. And for example, this is an example. Get an application that is easy for them to use, easy for them to build, and they will start thinking, that, ah, okay, this is possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have that just to talk about this part. Think about the citizen data science. Or, uh, when we talk about, uh, about citizenship, at the end, it's about to scale to the, all the employees in the organization. So imagine. And sometimes, indeed, you have the, uh, the capability to, to deliver that to the, your end users. But maybe your tech capability, they have your appeal. You can think about how to deliver to all the employees. And not, not just thinking in one people, but thinking about 10,000 all the employees in, in the organization. And, and this is about that, about democratizing in the organization the tech capabilities you have done, or even the tech adoption for others, platform, other uh, providers. Carlos, jump in because he knows the next slide is his. So no, <laughs> you turn to the next one. This, well, just four examples that we were uh, serving. This is a, a solution for doctors and, and hospitals. This is, uh, a, a, this is called Inner Eye. Uh, and it's a solution that they built based on our platform to be able to reduce the time to train algorithms to detect, in this case, uh, cancer. Uh, the point here is that doctor, instead of spending two, three, four times uh, the, uh, in the daily uh, activities, uh, reviewing the images that are big to analyze, complex to position, so we're able to use that capabilities in a simple and, and productive form. Thinking about inner eye if you look in that space. Or for example, and indeed I think that it's uh, just today was mentioned in the, in the Repsol, we were working uh, uh, when, uh, with Repsol that the end is how to scale in the organization the awareness and the capabilities that you are able to, to, to do internally. So at the end, this focus on the awareness and drive in all your organization that knowledge and that solutions that you have uh, built internally. And this is one that I, uh, I like the most. You can uh, search for it as, uh, as Wild Me. This is a nonprofit organization that many years ago you could say this is a crowdsourcing uh, a scenario, but what they push is gather information from uh, 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 social networks, analyze that information to be able to understand and track specific, not yet species, but specific animals ar uh, around the world. So be able to understand which are the migration paths and even where are the species uh, around the, w the world. And they are able to develop, uh, to deploy uh, solutions and model for everyone and detect, for example, that that whale is called Margarita and it is different from others. So to understand uh, where she is and, and, uh, and how to track that. Okay, so at the end, what we were trying to get here is, as I say, for you, the question is, what is the scale for you? Maybe the scale for you is to change the world and find the whales and, and help the, the sea to give it a better place. I don't know, but if you're in your company, First of all, stop wasting money in proof of concepts and MVPs, okay? Let's stop doing that. Let's think about big production, going to production, as I say, for example, an ambition can be, I want to have a new in artificial intelligence case in production every four weeks. That's where I want to go, that's my scale. Let, there's, you need to have all the variables. You need to look everywhere in your company to get there but it's possible, that's where we want to go these days. So build capabilities, build, call it center of excellence, control tower, AI factory, the AI smart people, and it's not important what is the name, but create something that is able to help and, and help people to be more agile and help people to understand how to get there. 
And again, this, and I think everyone said this during these two days, this, at the end, technology, we are getting there. Technology more or less is solved. Every day is easier to use. It's about the people. It's about how you convince people to use these tools and to use these tools for something that is important and relevant for the business. And again, how do you, how you do that in a way that is not the biggest effort every time you want to put something into production, okay? For me, those are the three main takeaways for you to think how to apply this. And we, we want to end with a video. It's a great place to put a video with the sound and, and the screen. So also for you to think, what are you going to do next with these technologies? Oh. Today, right now, you have more power at your fingertips than entire generations that came before you. Think about that. That's what technology really is. It's possibility, it's adaptability, it's capability. But in the end, it's only a tool. What's a hammer without a person who swings it? It's not about what technology can do, it's about what you can do with it. You're the voice, and it's the microphone. When you're the artist, it's the paintbrush. We are living in a future we always dreamed of. We have mixed reality that changes how we see the world and AI empowering us to change the world we see. You have more power at your fingertips than entire generations that came before you. So here's the question. What will you do with it? Thank you very much. If you want you. more information and more technical information, there is another talk from one of our colleagues in at 4.10, A Power Automatic Data Quality on Data Lakes. I really recommend you to go there if you want to know more about the technology. Now we still have a few minutes for questions in case you have any questions, not very difficult. We are here to answer those. Thank you very much. Wrong question. A microphone or? I have my opinion, but first I want to listen to, to Carlos. That's great. Well, you were mentioning uh, tools and services that we have right now. For example, one of the things that we have delivered is Azure Machine Studio, Azure Machine Learning uh, Services. That's to reduce, indeed, that complexity. That's something that uh, will grow over time. That's to reduce the end-to-end -end in the sense of uh, from MVP to, to scale out, but as a, a product that we were talking is more involved as, uh, as a technology. Uh, there's something that we are uh, working on is more for uh, transparent uh, modeling in the sense of to understand what's the model, model uh, that you are building and how that affects. And it is moving this to everyone. So for example, there are Power BI that you, were, you may uh, know uh, with AI Builder, just to uh, reduce the complexity to be able to everyone to deploy models, but in a business environment uh, uh, scenario. So that's think something that it's m moving as well. And the last thing that I would say, it's more of, of what we call inclusive design. That's when uh, you may start designing for just one people, that's your ideal persona. And the, the thing that we, we are working on is how to build for seven billion people. So sometimes you just not really think about uh, uh, instead of disability, thinking about mismatch with your environment. So at the end, we, do, we talk, and that, uh, for example, about detecting bias in your models uh, about the AI, but as well for any design, design mindset that you have uh, when building your solutions. So yeah, I'm thinking about how to scale and that part, but for any type of people. That's a really good answer, nothing to add. <laughs> okay, great.
I will take this one. And for me, one of the biggest challenges is to get everyone in line. For example, the data, the people were, are able to give you the data and having a pipeline, a pipeline that is working to put the same data into production and the test environment and the dev environment. IT people, security people, so having everyone aligned is, for me, is the, 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 the most challenging part, having everyone looking into the same place. Because I said, sometimes you have the models, and that's great, but you don't have the data. So it's like having pipes without water. And you put those into production, but there is no good water going into that. So I might sound simple, but getting the data into the models that is the real data and having that in an automated way is, is a big challenge. So it's, it's, you need a cross team to be able to do that. Okay, I will add, thinking about uh, IoT solutions that you, sometimes you need to gather data, is that uh, usually you start off with data and, just, and many people said, well, how can I, what can I ask with that data? And maybe you are not able to, uh, uh, to answer any question because usually you need to put the, the question first and understand if you have enough data. So sometimes in the IoT space, when do you need to gather information, uh, sometimes you start thinking about the model and be able to deploy, but you need to um, review that your production data matches the, the use cases and the business question that you have. So many, m many complexities or challenges that just are in that one, because I think that's, that's pretty common as well. And I give you the last key. If your data scientist is doing a lot of clicks to go into production, that's a bad sign. The, you, he has to be coding. So that's another indicator of how complicated it's going to be to put models into production. If you are using a mouse, it's going to be complex. If you are using some code, it's going to be replicable and it's going to be automatable with some DevOps or whatever. So think that, uh, take that in mind. So if someone is making too many clicks, maybe for going to production, we should be writing code. One half time for my one, more, one more question, I guess, if any. One minute of it to load. Okay, thank okay, you very much. Thank you much. very much.